So it's moving day. I am moving to a campground this time. Getting back to a little bit of normality. made it to my campground in Tauranga. It, I think it rained the whole drive, <laughs> but it was an okay drive. It was just maybe an hour and a half total, so pretty quick really. I had planned to stop at McLean Falls on the way here. Originally when I was planning to stop near Tauranga, I was aiming to stop there for a night, but luckily I checked because they're not actually open. On the website it says they are not opening at level two so instead i'm staying at a campground which is right by the beach i've stayed here before and i like it it feels pretty quiet i asked at reception how they're going and she said this it's done to get more now i think this campground maybe half of them are permanent I think. Well it's finally stopped raining, although it's a very misty or low cloud, but I thought I'd uh, at least have a look at the beach. See this is the more kind of permanent setup so I'm here. It looks pretty empty, but I don't know if that's to do with average weather anyway. Is it normally like this at this time of year anyway? I'm now thinking maybe the white mist is actually sea spray <laughs> but it's not the best weather. Quite a few people out there jogging or walking their dogs. Yeah you can definitely tell that this is a busier town. Good morning. It's actually a lovely morning. I was expecting it to be raining again today really. I thought I'd talk a little bit more about the camping situation right now because I think there is a bit of uncertainty about what is open and what is closed and what you can do now that it's level two in New Zealand. They are encouraging locals to start traveling and support the tourism industry in New Zealand because I think, I think tourism in New Zealand is the second biggest industry so obviously we're not getting any tourists in the country so they're kind of encouraging us locals to get out there and support the businesses. I actually rang this place before arriving just to check it was open. The New Zealand Motorhome and Caravan Association have parks everywhere in New Zealand and they are not actually opening until the Queen's birthday on the 1st of June and not all of them will open just because a lot of them are maintained by volunteers who are over 70 so I think they're just a bit concerned for their safety and I don't know it's just hard to figure out what's open and what's closed um, because if I look at my app that I use to plan my routes a lot of them still show that they're closed but if you read a little more closely it says closed for level four and then if you dig a bit more like there's a freedom camping spot right next door that says it's closed on the app but if you go onto the Tauranga council website it says it's open so let me go show you this freedom camping spot that's right next door about a beach. I love them. The wild 
little beaches. So this is the Freedom Camping Spot and the campgrounds by those trees over there. And there's basically there's room for maybe three vehicles in this painted area on the ground. And if you go over that, you'll get fined $200. I don't know. I, I didn't feel comfortable filming up there because there are a lot of people sitting in their cars and there are people in the RVs. So you just have to believe me. <laughs> Maybe I'll find another one today and film it. I guess I can talk about it from the campground. That's a freedom camping spot. I think there's room for three people there. And a female caravanner that I've met before had some spare polystyrene from her vintage caravan build and she's yeah, giving it to me if we can fit it in the ute. <laughs> and I'm going to ask for advice on, on my caravan as well. So Denise bought this vintage caravan and it was in a pretty sorry state. Mm -hmm and had to rip everything out on the inside. It was leaking all over the place. Some of the photos are quite impressive. <laughs> and she's got a lot of good advice for me, really. So when I got the caravan, it uh, leaked like a sieve. <laughs> and so when I was working on the roof, um, I noticed that there's seams that on the, in the aluminium. So I put the, um, there's this tape you can get for houses that has tar on one side and it's silver on the other and so um, I ran that along the seams and from the heat of the sun on the aluminium it actually melted the tar a little bit so it actually sucked into the aluminium really well and we've been having a chat about this um, skylight as well because the caravan has been getting really hot <laughs> in the middle of summer but I'm also really nervous about how flimsy the roof is at the moment, so I don't know. I'm kind of thinking, see how it goes, and I guess I could always add it in later on if there's room. Because I am also planning to have a solar panel up there, so will there be room? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so I knew that the roof sagged, so I started replacing the battens, and I mean, you can't nail it to aluminium or someone said to use no more nails. And then when I went to do that, um, because of the heat of the roof again, the battens actually ended up dropping down because the no more nails went hard and lost its sticky. <laughs> so it ended up sagging. I used a different type of glue and then it ended up propping the roof up with the cabinet here. And then I put in another bit here that holds up that cupboard to help give the roof some strength. Clever idea for making the most of space, just little jars that attached to the top there. Yeah, nice. And another tip I've been given, having plenty of hooks. Definitely a good idea. I think I've kind of noticed that with my, my UK caravan too. I wish there were a few more. <laughs> so we're going to have to cut the polystyrene sheets a little bit, but it's actually, it's going to fit okay. <laughs> And it's all fit! <laughs> Some exciting news, Hayden's actually coming tonight. So he's staying for one night as he he ended up picking up something from Auckland and, and driving then needs to drive back to Gisborne so he's just going to stop in Tauranga which is kind of in the middle <laughs> on the way back. Hey Hayden. <laughs> Hello YouTubers. <laughs> I need to shave. <laughs> I, I took the shaver to the farm and then left it there. A lazy night catching up and having some takeaways. <laughs> After lockdown is quite a novelty still. And then this morning I am taking the caravan to RV Mega to finally get a few things fixed on the caravan that I kind of wanted done before the lockdown, but you know, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> I'm actually going to share a video about getting the caravan fixed in a separate video. So I've got time to kill today. I've dropped off the caravan at RV Mega and I was told to text to 4 p.m. and I'll be told whether it's ready to pick up or whether it 
they were too busy to have a look at it so there is a chance I might be um, staying in their car park tonight or at a freedom camping spot just down the road so we just we'll just have to wait and see sounds like they're busy so I actually came back to this freedom camping spot to show you the markings on the ground finally been able to kind of film it for you from my car <laughs> so this freedom camping spot really isn't designed for caravans because if I park there I would be facing the wrong way I would not be able to see the ocean so it's really designed for motorhomes and vans really so I'm kind of just fluffing around filling in the day today bought a few things that I've been wanting to for a while <laughs> <laughs> like a cord to charge my GoPro so I can film some more driving shots because I managed to lose my last one. I heard there was a couple of freedom camping spots near RV Mega so I've just been checking them out. Not feeling particularly welcoming. This one was a little bit harder to find. Um, yeah, it does look like Two giant trucks are parked where the freedom camping spot is designated. There is a guy with a house truck parked along here. I wonder if he'd move in the evening. But no, I don't know if I'd feel safe. Don't know if I'd feel safe here. Yeah, there's no way I would stay at that other freedom camp on my own that had a really weird vibe to it um so i've come to another one nearby and i saw a sign saying uh no freedom camping zone so <laughs> i can't see anything that looks like you can actually stay here even though this is the map this is the area so what i'm learning about freedom camping it's a little bit tricky in Tauranga, a little bit tricky. Definitely, like I would not want to come here with my caravan trying to find the Freedom Camping spot. That would be impossible. You'd, you'd come here and then have to turn around and go somewhere else. Well, this is good news. I uh, might be heading off tonight after all. Great. quick set up in the dark one perk coming back for the third night in a row is I got a discount for this campground which is pretty awesome I had actually been recommended a good freedom camping spot by the people um, at RV Mega but I don't know I just it looked like there were only two RVs max and since it was already five I bet someone else was already in there so I decided to take the easy option and just come back to the same campground from last two nights 